How will you feel if I tell you that I can read your mind and print your exact thoughts on paper? How will you feel if I tell you that that high-performing sports person is right now going, undergoing therapy for cancer and is still at his peak performance? Amazed? Welcome to radiology in 2040. Radiology is that branch of medicine which deals with imaging technologies. For example, radiation in X-ray and CT, sound in ultrasound, and heavy-duty magnets in MRI. How many of you present here have ever got a CT or MRI done for yourselves or maybe your loved ones? In the current scenario, if you want to get a CT scan, a contrast-enhanced CT scan done, then first, you have to take an appointment with the hospital. Then wait for four to six hours with fasting, and then reach the hospital. Then wait for your scan. Get your scan done. And then again wait for your report for four to six hours, or sometimes even a couple of days, depending on setup. And then your treatment will start. Now imagine, you get your test done, you are walking out of the investigation room, and zoom, your images come to your phone, your radiologist's phone, and your treating doctor's phone. Then out of thin air, a prescription which is tailor-made for you comes to your doctor's phone, and he checks it, validates it, and zoom, it will land to your phone. You're still walking out of that investigation room. Then, if you agree to take those medicines which your doctor prescribed, the medicines will be automatically delivered to you. And since you have prescription in your phone, your phone will remind you to take those medicines at the desired time. And then, with the help of a small skin patch, like a biomarker patch, your phone will be able to monitor the levels of your medicine, whether you have taken it or not, and will keep reminding you to take that medicine. How's that? And imagine all of this happening right in front of your doorstep. Amazed? Welcome to radiology in 2040. So these, port with, like with every technology, radiology has also been benefited by shrinking size and weight of hardware. The X-ray machine you, sh you saw in the first slide, now that big X-ray machine is shrinking down to the size of these SLR cameras, or maybe they, it'll get even smaller. The huge MRI magnet, which engulfs a human being inside when it takes the images, is shrinking down to the size of a front-loading washing machine. With the high-speed internet, the images can be acquired at one part of the globe, and in a split second can go to the other part of the globe, and the report can come back in one second, and the treatment can be started. These portable diagnostics, along with artificial intelligence and teleradiology, will change the way healthcare will be delivered across the world in coming times. To understand the implication, I will tell you a real-life example, which I went through a few years back. It was in, uh, I think, July 2019, when a group of professional trekkers in my known circle went for trekking to the Himalayas. Suddenly, there was this bad weather, heavy snowfall, thunderstorm, and a few of them incurred serious injuries. Fortunately for them, first aid and medical facilities were available there. But due to the lack of high-end diagnostics, they couldn't find out what really was going on with them. So four out of them were airlifted to Delhi. 
Unfortunately, on the way, two, two of them succumbed. And two reached us. They were in a really critical situation. And finally, none of them could make it. This got me thinking that why can't we have high-end diagnostics in such risky terrains at the point of care? And the answer lies in the fact that, you know, putting up a machine, investing some amount is still feasible. But how will aspirational doctors like me or a skilled technician would settle in Himalayas. There are no growth opportunities there. And to acquire complex diagnostics, you really need skillful person behind it. So now, in the coming times, with the help of these portable diagnostics and artificial intelligence, the acquisition of image would be like switching off or on a fan. And we will be able to uh, acquire high-end diagnostics at such risky terrains. I mean, if you ask me, I wouldn't mind taking a 10-day posting there in that van, have a gala time myself. So that is how radiology will impact the delivery of healthcare across the globe. Images taken at Himalayas, reported at Trishur, gone back to Himalayas and medical treatment given. So, in the last two decades, with the demand of very, you know, high quality images, we have gone from taking these black and white, grayscale images to images which look like this. We've gone from showing the baby to the parents like this to showing them like this. We are very, very, very close to reality as far as imaging is concerned. But now, what I'm going to tell you is something which will blow your mind. From understanding the, the structure, you know, a lot of work right now is going on to understand the functional imaging, the function of the organ at a molecular level. One such technique is called as functional imaging of brain. And this technique is called bold imaging. BOLD is the acronym of Blood Oxygen Level Dependent Imaging, BOLD Imaging. So you know what happens? In a normal person, in routine activities, the person uses only 5% of the brain capacity. And these centers are called as active centers of the brain. Okay? So whenever these active centers get activated, what happens? the oxygen consumption in these, in these centers increases, okay? So, in the image what I'm showing you is the scan of the brain and the lit up area, what you can see, is the area which lit, lights up when a person does finger tapping. How to use it? Currently we are using it. How are we using it? Let me explain. So in a patient, if the patient has a lesion in the brain, for example, in this case, the patient has brain tumor. The white area you see in the center of the image is, the, is where the patient has brain tumor. Now, the patient, of course, needs a surgery for this brain tumor. So what we do is we make the patient do a certain activities. Like in this case, if you see the area which is lit up adjacent to the tumor is the brain which is utilized in walking. So whenever we want to do a brain surgery of a patient, we map out all the active areas of the brain so that even after, sur even after the surgery, the patient has no weakness. Not only activities, motor activities, this functional MRI can tell us the active areas of the brain which are involved in language vision, sensation, perceptions, behavior, logical thinking, emotions. Wow, this is a very, very, very powerful technology. And now, a lot of big companies are using this technology outside of medical imaging. It is called as neuromarketing. So, what happens is, 
whenever these big companies, they make an ad, a promotional material, they test it on functional MRI and see what are the areas of the brain this ad is evoking. Is it li lighting up the areas which are responsible for happiness, for desire? So then, boom, their product will be sold. So, even, so earlier they used to test it in other conditions, but now neuromarketing or with functional MRI, it has made very easy for this, these companies to test their ads before they come into the market. And in the coming years, what scientists are doing, along with artificial intelligence, they are reverse engineering it. For example, right now we are seeing the mental areas which are mapped out with a certain activity. What they are doing is to you know, reverse engineering it and decode it back. So if I do a functional MRI of myself, and somebody is looking at my functional MRI, they can read my mind and print my exact thoughts on paper. Amazing, isn't it? So now you have to be really, really aware of what you're thinking because I might just can read it and tell you and print it on paper. Okay. So now let's imagine a scenario where you have taken your friend to the doctor. And the doctor says, my dear, your friend is suffering from well-differentiated biphasic synovial cell carcinoma invo involving talus and navicular bones of the foot and needs immediate surgery. How many of you understood the, understood the disease? I'm, I'm sure many of you like. And you ask, doctor, can you show us the disease? And the doctor says, OK, sure. Look at the MRI. See how clear it is. See, there is the cancer. How many of you now understood the disease? I'm sure many of you are still like. And now imagine your doctor comes in the room and shows you this. He says, this is the foot of your patient. And this thing you see here is the tumor which the patient has. By the way, this is the same patient's foot and tumor. And he shows you this and keeps it on the table. Now, how many of you can understand it? This technology, my dear friends, is called 3D printing technology. And it is right now used for printing such 3D prints of the patient's anatomy and disease. We print them and just place it on the table for patients and their kids to understand the disease. And not just patients, sometimes even doctors, you know, they want to see the relationship of the tumors with major blood vessels, nerves. They can preempt the complications which can happen even before going inside the operation theater. And sometimes they also do a dummy surgeries on this 3D print so that when they are doing a real life surgery, blood loss is less. They know what, what is going to happen. So this is the importance of 3D printing technology as of now. But in the next two decades, what will happen? So research is on where we can print human organs with the help of 3D printing technology. As of now, I'm sure you know that if there is a patient of kidney failure, the patient keeps waiting, waiting, and sometimes, you know, just dies waiting for a donor to give a kidney to them. There are huge waiting lists for kidney donations. But in the coming years, with the help of my kidney, I can print the kidney in lab, put on patient's stem cell on it, and grow a human kidney in lab and just put it in a kidney failure patient. So no more cues for kidney transplantation. That's the magic of 3D printing technology. Amazed? OK. Now I'll ask you a question. How many of you know this lady? Yes. 
She's a very famous Bollywood actor. Isn't she beautiful? And she is a survivor. Because a few years back, she was diagnosed with cancer. And she was undergoing chemotherapy for cancer when she looked like this. This is one of the many side effects of cancer treating chemotherapeutic drugs. Besides baldness, it can cause tiredness, fatigue, anemia, infection, nausea, loss of appetite, feeling of sickness, bleeding, bruising, and many other uh, side effects. But let's first understand why these cancer-treating chemotherapeutic drugs cause these side effects. So you know, these chemotherapeutic drugs are tuned to kill fast-growing cells. So in a patient with cancer, they will have cancer cells in their body and will also have normal cells. So normal cells like hair follicle, nail bed, blood cells, cells of intestinal mucosa, these are fast-growing cells, okay? Now, when a chemotherapeutic agent or a chemotherapy medicine is introduced in the body, it has to kill all fast-growing cells, so it kills the cancer cell as well as normal cells. And hence, we have a battery of side effects which happen to the patient. But I promised you initially that there will be a high-performing sports person who will be on chemotherapy and will still be on his peak performance. How is that possible? That is possible with the upcoming technique called Theranostics. Theranostics is a combination of therapy plus diagnostics. In this, what happens is, there is a therapeutic biomarker which is piggybacking on a diagnostic biomarker. So therapeutic biomarker means something which will kill cancer, cancer cells. It is piggybacking on a diagnostic biomarker means that something which will detect cancer cell. So now in the body what happens is, there is cancer cell and there are normal cells. Now on the wall of cancer cell, there is a wall protein which is only present on the wall of cancer cells and is not present on the wall of normal cells. So once this theranostic particle goes inside the body, what will happen? It will attach itself on the wall of cancer cell and causing death of the cancer cell while the normal cell is happy and smiling. Isn't it amazing? Okay, now another question for all of you. How did you feel and what did you feel about radiology in 2040? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't answer me, because I can read your mind and print your thoughts on paper. So let's do that. Okay, zoom. Oh my God, you thought that is amazing and excellent? With that, I end my talk. Thank you very much for being an amazing audience. Thank you. Thank you.